What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Two Pop Day Handle. I hope everybody is having a fabulous week. I know it's the first full like five day work week of 2024. So a little rough Monday morning, I was walking to the subway and I was like, God, I could do this for five days. Like, seriously, this is like we're still doing this. Like we haven't abolished a five day work week yet. Maybe one day, but not yet. So alas, first full week of the year. Hope you're all do not first full week of the year, you know what I mean? But I hope everybody is surviving, thriving, doing well. Um, again, sorry that this is a day late. It has been a very eventful week to be Andrew Nucatola, and I have a lot to talk about. I mean, the Golden Globes, Drag Race, the Mean Girls premiere, so much music coming out. So much music coming out and I am like bursting at the seams to talk about it and I cannot wait. But before we hop into all of that, I wanted to kind of bring you guys up to speed. I've had some fun, some fun little adventures this week thus far. Um, starting with Monday night, I went to a screening of Good Grief, which is Dan Levy's new Netflix movie. Dan Levy's one of my favorite actors of all time. I just adore him. I like look up to him. I He's totally inspiring. I just like love all of his work. I think he's hilarious. I love everything about him. So when I saw he was doing an event at 92Y, which is a venue on the Upper East Side, I was like, all right, I have to go. Which if you've never been to the 92Y, I totally, totally recommend you like look into their events. They do really cool things. I saw Renee Rapp and Drew Barrymore there in, I don't remember when actually, a few months ago. And it was that event where that man like rushed the stage to get to Drew, that like crazy stalker man. I was there. It was crazy. Just as crazy as the video is, like it was 10 times crazier because it, I can't even get into it. That's like a story time for another time. But that being said, went to the 92Y on Monday night and I saw a screening of Good Grief. And then it was a conversation with uh, Josh Horowitz and Dan Levy. And they actually recorded it for uh, Josh's podcast. I think it's like Happy, Sad, Depressed. I don't know. He is a podcast and they recorded it for that. So the talk will be up eventually about you know, what they talked about. So that was cool that it was like a live podcast, but we did get to watch the movie and it was so, so good. As somebody who's dealt with grief a lot, unfortunately, in their life, I went into it kind of nervous. I thought it was going to be a little heavy. I was like ready for teary eyed. And it definitely had its like tear jerking moments. It definitely was not like a happy go lucky movie. It wasn't like I was laughing the whole time, but it, it was a really good balance of like the truths of grief and like the truth of like, how you feel and how you cope with it. And it's different for everybody, but there are certain things if you've dealt with grief, A, I'm sorry, B, there are certain things that we all just go through like that is just normal when you lose a loved one. So he captured it really, really well, but then also put like a nice kind of positive, fun spin on it. And there's just like a lot of fun messaging and the cinematography of it was beautiful. And yeah, I really recommend it. It was so much fun. Uh, it was a really good conversation. They obviously talked about Schitt's Creek. And a fun fact about me, if you ever want to see me cry, all you have to do is put on the simply the best scene from Schitt's Creek, specifically when David does it for Patrick in the uh, Rose Apothecary, like when it's the actual version of the song. For some reason, that scene makes me cry every single time and like five times harder than the acoustic version that Patrick sings to David in the apothecary um but they played the acoustic one which is like the more popular one i'm like the unpopular person who thinks that when david performs it it's more emotional but i wasn't expecting them to play that scene and i literally was like i had to like grip. i was like oh my god don't cry don't cry don't cry i'm just i'm a weak gay bitch what can i say like it always makes me cry but yeah so he talked about shit's creek he talked about uh the movie obviously he talked about like his MTV life. It was cool because Josh obviously works for MTV. And if you don't know, Dan Levy got his start at MTV. Uh, when he was like 20 years old, he dropped out of film school to go be on MTV, like host a show there. So they had that fun little connection. So it was fun. It was a really, really good time. It, when the podcast comes out, I'll post about it on our story so you guys can listen to their episode. But uh, yeah, it was really, really fun. And if you're looking for something to watch, it was really good. I wouldn't say it was only like an hour and a half. So it wasn't that long of a movie. It was like very digestible, very well done. Definitely, definitely recommend and like a good way to kind of kick off the year for movies for me. So that was Monday night. And then on Tuesday, lo and behold, Miss Dua Lipa is now going to be on the Seth Meyers show, I find out. So I'm like, oh my God, 
I have to go. So I go, I get tickets, me and my friend Nicole, we go to see Dua on Seth Meyers and it was unclear if she was going to perform or not. Like it wasn't on the list and it could have gone either way, but she did not perform, but it was honestly kind of more fun to see her do the interview and everything. It, it premiered last night on Tuesday night. So it's out, it's not like a spoiler, but they finished their day drinking because Dua blacked out during her day drinking with Seth Meyers. So they had to go back they were like, all right, we got to finish this. They took shots out of like a Barbie dream house, ice luge kind of thing. They got tattoos on stage. Like it was just like a really fun, lighthearted, cool afternoon. Um, And yeah, it was really fun. So I got to go to that, which was cool. I mean, Dua looked stunning. You guys know how you didn't know how I feel about Dua. So I was just very excited to see her. And then after that, I left there. Me and Nicole got dinner quick. And then we I ran downtown to go to the uh, New York Comedy Club because Jessica Kirsten was there. My fucking God, it was the funniest hour of my life. All There were four comedians. So there were two guys who opened for her, then Jessica, then she left. And there was one like kind of wasn't like she was the main act, obviously Jessica, but she had someone go on. She was only on for like 15, 20 minutes. All four of them. Absolutely hilarious. She's doing a um, residency at the comedy club right now. So she's there till March, I think like two days a week mostly sold out. I think there's some tickets left for the last show in March. So if you're interested, I would go on now and get the tickets because I promise you it will sell out. And rightfully so. It was so funny. If you've never seen any of Jessica's specials or seen her TikToks, please do me a favor. Like I give you permission to pause the episode and go look her up now because you will piss your pants. Just promise you'll come back after and finish the episode. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, that, that was a blast. We had so much fun. Like I kid you not, there was not one person who was not laughing the entire time she was on stage. The second she stepped on to the second she stepped off, we were all cracking up, hysterical. Like, it was so good. If you get a chance to see her, she is on tour right now. And she's actually said she's going to be filming a Netflix special in New York at, I think it was Tony Hall. So it's not announced yet, but she, maybe I yeah, shouldn't be saying that, but whatever. So it's technically not announced yet, but she said tickets will be going on sale soon. So I'm definitely going to try and get tickets to go see her film her Netflix special because she's just like, she is so funny and I I kind of like in my comedy era like I went to go see Mateo Lane back in December we saw Jessica last night next Tuesday I'm going to see Monet Exchange the opening night of her uh comedy show at the play theater or something like that I don't know playhouse theater or something I don't know but it's next Tuesday so but don't worry episode will be on time I'm going to record on Monday so I won't be I won't talk about it next week but I'll give a recap the following week and I'll post about it on stories and stuff so keep you guys updated but um yeah so a very exciting week I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm really tired. And the weather has been back and forth. It's 50 degrees today, but it was blizzarding on Saturday. So I'm a little, you know, I'm a little not as congested as I was a few weeks ago, but the, you know, the vibes are off a little bit, not gonna lie, but we're doing it. We're surviving and yeah, we're getting through. Um, so that was kind of like my quick little recap of the week. Like I said, I have a lot to talk about this week. So I wanted to wrap that up as quick as possible so we could dive in because Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, are we being fed this week. So without further ado, let's hop into our first segment of the show and we are going straight into Drew Releases. If you're new here, Drew Releases is my segment where I talk about new music that's either coming out in the upcoming Friday, came out last Friday. This week is all talking about upcoming release. Actually, that's not true. There is one release from last week, but it tags onto a release from this Friday. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. But I mean, I can't start this segment without talking about the fact that on Friday, we are getting Yes And by Ariana Grande, her first single in, what is it, three years, I want to say? Yeah, since Positions. Like, oh my God. So the timing was right. If you listened to last week's episode, I said, I think we're going to get the announcement on the 7th, which was Sunday, and then get the release uh, for this Friday the 12th. So that is what's happening. And I am so excited. We were, Thomas and I were like laying in bed, violently hungover, I will say, um, just like on our phones. And we started seeing Sweetener, the account, posting the visual of like the album cover, or, like the postcard rather that she went out, that she sent out. And Thomas was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's happening. And sure enough, it was like every few minutes she was uploading another part of it. And it was like a nine square grid of the, what we now 
now find out is the album cover and we were like literally sitting in bed screaming we were freaking out like the most insane case of gay panic you could imagine and we are getting a new ariana album or ariana single this friday how crazy is that to say we don't know when the album's coming out all we know is that the album cover is the cover that is released right now so like that half shot of her face with the red lip coming out on friday i cannot wait some radio stations have heard it already and said it's a bop people are saying that it samples vogue by madonna which like okay let's a madonna sample that's kind of crazy and also just like we're continuing this like house renaissance beyonce vibe i guess with this madonna so i'm into it i'm so excited i will be live updating i think thomas and i might stay up till midnight tomorrow night and listen to it at midnight so we can like really just bask in it because we are that excited so maybe i'll do like a record i'll like record that for a tiktok or something stay tuned it'll be on my personal tiktok if i do so keep an eye out for that but i think we're gonna stay up and wait till midnight because this is it's a big deal in our household it is a big deal in this apartment that ariana's releasing music and we just i can't wait i'm literally i'm so excited she's right now from she's filming the rest of wicked in london so i thought she might do something in new york like come you know do like a pop-up or i don't know something i was being a little delusional and hopeful she's in london filming so it's not going to happen but i'm sure she'll be here for press eventually so hopefully there'll be some event or something that we can go to and see her or performance or something you know i'm always i'm always looking for something to go to so if there is i will definitely do everything in my power to go see her when she's in new york but yeah friday ariana grande is back i cannot believe those words are coming out of my mouth the next release is the one that I was talking about earlier that kind of had a release last Friday, but also, or actually, no, it was Monday. Was it Monday? Yeah, it was the 8th she they released so the mean girls the movie soundtrack is coming out this friday as is the movie people have been seeing it um the premiere happened which we are i'm not even going to talk about it yet because as you can imagine there's a lot to discuss about the mean girls premiere um but the soundtrack comes out this friday so i'm super excited for that world burn was released on monday the 8th i believe it was um and that's like one of the that's probably like the most anticipated song from the broadway show for the adaptation uh and i mean it's insane it's renee rap there's a video of her singing it in from 2019 when she was on broadway like a professionally filmed video and i've listened to that video so many times so now to hear the 2023 2024 oh my god it's like that time of the year where i forget what year it is but it is the 2024 version and listening to the two of them the five year apart difference like the 2019 was incredible but now hearing her vocal ability now and how she's kind of you know grown up and progressed and learned more about her voice like She's just incredible. I mean, you guys know I could talk about Renee Rapp for hours and I'm going to talk about her again later, but we are getting the Mean Girls soundtrack on Friday, so make sure you're tuned in. I don't know when I'm seeing the movie yet. I'm, I'm sure I'll see it, hopefully, by the next time we record. That's like my goal is to at least see it before. Oh, that means I need to see it by Monday. TBD. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. But the movie does come out Friday. I'm so excited. It's getting good reviews. Today was the day that they could drop the reviews and people are, they're liking it. I mean, obviously it's a musical, so it's not going to get 100% Rotten Tomatoes. It's, people hate musicals, which like, I don't understand, but I guess do you. But I'm very excited. I cannot wait. And more about the Mean Girls movie in a bit. And then the final release is one that I was very excited about. And now I don't know how to feel about it. So it is Lil Nas X. The single is called Jay Christ. And originally he teased that he was releasing a song with Kesha. They both posted about it. They both said that there was a song coming out. And now it appears that I don't I don't know if Kesha's on the song. So he's been posting about it, posting about it. It's like another religious thing, which listen, I get, I understand like the play on religion. Like I'm I'm not a religious person. Like believe in what you want, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to church. I'm not, this, this is not my thing. And he is going again for this like religious joke, I guess, like the whole thing. It's literally called Jay Christ. And it is the single cover is like him on a cross being like carried away. And there's no sign of Kesha anywhere on the promotion or the single like artwork, anything like that. So I'm it's unsure if Kesha is on the song. But what we do know is that there's some type of religious joke to it he teased the music video today and there are doppelgangers of taylor swift barack obama uh mariah carey i think ed sheeran maybe oprah i don't know just like a lot of celebrity doppelgangers which just gives me the vibe of kanye famous when he did that scene where everybody was naked in the bed which this is obviously not going to be to that extent like traumatic and 
insane, but it's just, I don't know. Don't really know what to expect of it. I will listen. Obviously, I do love Lil Nas X, so I'm very excited that he's coming back. I hope it's a song with Kesha, and I hope the whole era isn't, like, religiously playful. Like, people are comparing it to Madonna and Gaga, which totally understand, and just kind of honestly a little disappointed that he's, like, doing this again. Because, like, I feel like he's, like, pissed off the Christians already. He did, like, the devil sneakers. Or the, the blood sneakers, I'm sorry. Then he, like, gave the devil a lap dance in his music video. So, like, they already were, like, blabbering about him. And now he's just, like, giving them more fuel. But then we have to think, like, Lil Nas X is literally... He started... He was he was on Stan Twitter. Like, he was literally a Nicki Minaj Stan page. So, like, his whole life he's been trolling. And his first breakout single was Old Town Road, which is, like, the biggest troll song. Like, it makes sense that he's doing all of this. And, like... I'm saying this now, but, like, I will listen to it. And I'll probably end up liking it because I don't... There's not a song of his I dislike. I'm just a little confused. I just, like, don't really know what to expect. I just want to know if Kesha's on it. Like, I don't know what's going on. So, more on that next week. But the song does come out on Friday, so I am excited. But I can't lie. I am most excited for Ariana. Like, there is nothing this week that is going to top how excited I am for this new Ariana Grande track. It is going to be so good. I haven't even heard it. And I'm just saying it's going to be so good because I know. Like, when is she not? You know what I mean? Like, when is there an Ariana Grande single that isn't good? Or just anything? I can't wait. I'm so excited. I, you will hear from me before next week about this song. Guaranteed I will be posting. I'll be, you know, tweeting, TikToking, Instagramming, the whole nine. You will hear from me about this song before next week. So stay tuned on that. And those are all the Drew releases coming out this Friday. So super, super stoked. I just love, I love a new music Friday. So I'm very excited for that. Switching over into just some of our more pop culture topics. Um, it is more music news. So starting off, the producer of My House by Beyonce, which was like my favorite song of 2023, The Dream, he has confirmed that My House was the official end of Renaissance Act One era, which everyone could kind of assume because the movie came out, the tour was over, this, that, the third. But he has officially confirmed that My House was it recorded in October of 2023. So it wasn't like an album cut or anything. It was a new original song. Maybe it was scrapped or something and they picked it back up. That I don't, was unclear. But so it was recorded in October. It was the end of act one. Parkwood, her, uh, you know, her company changed all of their socials back to their original state. So it was all like Renaissance. It was the red for the movie. And now it's back to black with, oh, Amy Winehouse, but it's back to black, like the regular Parkwood logo, which just leads me to think act two of Renaissance is closer than we think. I'm apologize. Actually, I'm not apologizing, but like I'm warning you more so in advance that when Beyonce starts to tease and drop and release and everything for act two, it is going to be, it will be too pop to handle. Like, it is going to be a, it's going to be crazy. I, I will be talking about it nonstop, but it's, I'm, it's me. Like, it's going to happen. And I, th I honestly, I'm thinking we're getting it this summer, kind of similar to the release of Renaissance where we got like the lead single in June, Break My Soul, but we're going to get the act two single probably to kick off the summer. I would, I imagine she would follow probably the same kind of lineup only because it's supposed to be a trilogy album and again this is literally all rumors like no one knows for sure it's just weird to call an album act one if you're not going to have at least an act two maybe an act three so we are closer to act two than we think i want to say like i think it's coming sooner than we all expected still no live album but you know what i digress oh more beyonce news actually thinking about it she is rumored to be doing a Tina Turner tribute at the Grammys this year. So that is very exciting. I the, the Today Show reported it. So like, I trust them. I'm pretty sure it's true. It hasn't been like Grammy announced yet, but they also haven't announced the performers for the Grammys yet. So kind of TBD there. But if anyone's going to do a Tina Turner tribute, it's going to be Beyonce. It's, uh, it's literally like obvious in that sense. And I mean, that's just going to be so good. Tina is one of Beyonce's favorite artists of all time, understandably. And I mean, she's just there's no one better to do this tribute so i'm very much looking forward to that if it is true and on the topic of the grammys i believe we are getting the first live performance of houdini on the grammys and i only say that because on the seth meyers interview he asked her about the grammys and duo was like oh yeah i picked out my outfit and my and stopped and i was like i almost just spilled something i shouldn't so i feel like that's kind of her like hinting at the fact that she got the performance for the Grammy. So that's very exciting. Um, 
In more music news, SZA had a complete meltdown over the weekend about um, music leaking. So I guess Lana leaked. Again, we still don't know if it's an album, an EP, a bonus track, like whatever it is, but it leaked. I didn't see it anywhere. For something to get leaked, like there was either like an inside job somebody leaked it or like you got to change your password. But uh, she had a full meltdown on Twitter and she said, leaking my music is stealing. This is my job. This is my life. My intellectual property. You are a fucking thief. And I promise to put maximum energy into holding everyone accountable to the full extent of the law. I am tired. In all caps, mind you. So uh, she's pissed. And I get it. You know, you work hard on a body of work. You work, you know, you do all this lead up and promotion and writing and it's a lot of work i get it i understand but at the end of the day especially for an artist at the magnitude that sis is at like she's gonna go number one she is huge like people eat her up so whether it leaks or not she's gonna get the sales but then her producer i believe it was her producer tweeted that leaking music pushes the release and or cancels a project i swear to fucking god if this project, I, it can get pushed, that's fine. Push it back, do whatever. If this project gets scrapped because it got leaked, I, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dive into it more because my God, if she scraps this project because of this, it is like, I'm sorry, that's kind of loser energy. So I love you, SZA, I know you're not listening. Don't scrap it, please don't scrap it. Like. It's okay. You're gonna go number. You already have like 100 million streams in 2024, 10 days in. You already, I'm pretty sure you just broke a Spotify record yesterday. Like, you can release it. It's okay. It's gonna get streams. People are gonna listen to it. Half of the controlled deluxe version we all had already because it was on SoundCloud for years and it still went crazy. Like, you can release you singing the phone book and it's going to do well. So please don't scrap it. I'm begging you. If I could get on my knees right now, I would. Please do not scrap this. That being said, that's, some, that's our music news. <laughs> um, moving forward, so Drag Race premiered on Friday, which is super exciting. It is a split premiere, which I'm very tired of. I don't... <sighs> I get why they do it. They want to stretch the season. You know, they want to keep the suspense. They want to... Uh, I don't know. But it's been a, it's been a lot. Like when they did it for season six and then didn't do it again until 12, that was fine. That was six years between. But it's been a split premiere. Has it been every season since 12? I know it was for 15. I know it was for 16. I don't, I don't remember. But there's been too many split premieres in the past four years for this to continue. Hopefully this is the end of it. Um, but there's split premiere, so we met six of the queens, one, two, three, four, five, seven of the queens, excuse me. Um, and then we have seven more on Friday, so exciting for that. And then excited to kind of, I feel like the premieres, they're exciting, but like you get through them and then the show really starts. Um, but that is not to discredit the work that these girls did because I absolutely loved this premiere. It had the highest grossing views of any season for a premiere, which is so exciting, like, gaggy congrats to you girls and yeah we're just gonna kind of run through it they are switching things up uh they have this new rate a queen system which is essentially the circle i haven't watched it but uh jocelyn came over and watched it with us and it was all over twitter that it's pretty much what they do on the circle so essentially they just like rank everybody this week it didn't really weigh in at all it didn't um there wasn't like I, it wasn't clear how it's going to come into play later in the season but I don't know. They're doing it. They're rating each other. It's going to cause drama. It's essentially what they're doing. Like, I get it. I get why Rue's doing it. She wants to make good TV. But like, Mama, you've won the Emmy every time you're nominated. What more do you need? That being said, it was the talent show, typical Drag Race. If anyone doesn't watch Drag Race, I'm sorry. We're going to talk about it every week. So maybe watch it. Maybe like brush up on it or just listen and follow along and like pretend like you know what we're talking about but um I just wanted to kind of run through the talent shows I thought the mini challenge was fun I thought it was interesting that it was like on a ring camera I thought it was hilarious like I was laughing but it was uh it was definitely something I uh I don't know not not too much but it, it was funny it was hilarious and like I liked the idea of it but I was just like what like it was just it was it was a little weird but not mad about it. it. You know, it was fine. And I'm curious if they're going to do that again next week or if it'll be a different photo shoot challenge for the next seven girls. I guess we'll wait and see. It'll be out obviously Friday. Um, can we just say Sapphire Crystal? My God, 
I she was incredible. I will say she wasn't my favorite runway, but or talent show, but she definitely won that lip sync. We'll get into the lip sync song in a minute because if you know what it is, you know that I was fucking gagged when it started. We'll get into that. But Sapphire Crystal, she did win the week. Um, and that means she got immunity to save her a week, I guess, when she's in the bottom in the later of the season. So cool to see that Rude's bringing immunity back. If you don't watch, season five was the last time that they did immunity for a girl to like save herself. And now it's not, it's come back for 16. So 11 seasons later, which is pretty cool to see that they're bringing it back. And I'm curious how it's going to, you know, come into play as the season goes on. But so, yeah, so her, her, I mean, her, don't not get me wrong, her runway and her talent show were fantastic. I just personally thought Q did such a knockout job on both the runway and the talent show. The conversation going online about like queens doing um, lip syncing for their talent show, I don't understand what is the problem. They're drag queens. I understand that there's other talents and we've seen so many talents expressed on the show, but when it boils down to it, like a drag queen's been a lip sync. So I don't get why people are mad about it. It's literally probably like, if not the biggest part of their job, their second biggest part of their job. So that conversation to me is like, let's, you know, everybody on mute because they're drag queens. What do you want them to do? But I will say the fact that Q didn't lip sync and she did her little ballet number where she was like the puppet hysterical i was cracking up and it showed a lot of versatility for her for her to come in and she's showing all of these outfits she made i mean her runway was crazy she made the whole thing and then you know she's coming like this like she just has this like cool look about her you know even like her entrance look she i was like oh okay i'm i'm, I'm into i'm into this and then to switch it and do something funny for the talent show and then come out in this like gaggy outfit that she made the full black sequins the wings that spread and how the colors on it like she definitely she showed us a, a, a mix of both so i'm excited to see what she has because i feel like there's definitely a lot under cute's belt and i am excited but she definitely did not win that lip sync sapphira took it from the second the song started. Um, and then moving through the list, Mirage absolutely ate that performance. I'm very excited to see what she has to bring. She's been all over my Twitter timeline now of just like her performances that she does like at her gigs and she can move, she can dance. Like she's gonna be one to watch this season. And I'm so excited to see what she brings because Vegas girls do not play, especially after being in Vegas last weekend and seeing like she performed at... I think she's performed at both of the clubs that we went to. She wasn't there, obviously, when we went. But the Vegas girls that we did see were phenomenal. So I know that she's going to bring it. And I mean, she's besties with Anitra, who was on season 15. So clearly, like, the talent, talent attracts talent. So I'm very excited to see what she brings to the table for season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Moving on. Uh, Dawn, I mean, I loved her the second that I saw her. I was like, she's going to be hysterical. I found her today. She does Swifty. So, like, hey, girl, that's, you know. Like, a, it's, like a, it's like a trauma bond. Two Swifties together, like, two gay Swifties at that. Like, we got some trauma to deal with. So, hey, girl, we see you. Um, her performance was hysterical. I mean, she's she's weird. She's quirky. She's funny. She's different. Like, I love her makeup style. Everyone's comparing her to Willow, Crystal Method. And, of course, everyone's going to compare people to other people. And I see it. And she kind of eats into it, too. She's like, yeah, hello. Like, I do kind of look like them. And I do have a similar drag style but I love that drag style. I think it's so much fun. Her uh, talent show where she like flops on the stage, they drag her out. Um, they pulled her, her arms off. Like the whole thing was just like so hysterical. So I'm really excited to see what she brings for the rest of the season. I think she's going to be a fun one to watch and I hope she goes far because I feel like as she continues to go, she's just going to get weirder and weirder. And I'm into that. Like, I like that. As much as I love like a glamorous drag queen and want like the beauty and the dram like the dramatics, she's fucking weird. And I'm excited to see what she has in store for us. Next up is Tsunami. So this is a New York girl. She is Candid Muse's drag daughter. So I had high expectations from the jump. She is stunning. She is gorgeous. She's so cute out of drag. Her drag, I've seen her, I haven't seen her live, but I followed her for a while. Um, so I knew she what she can bring. She didn't bring a lot for this premiere, I will say. I was a little let down, but I, it's the premiere. It's the first episode. I am not 
counting her out. I know she can bring it. I know she will bring it. And I can't wait to see how she represents New York. Her song was great. I thought the performance could be a little bit more high energy, but I did love the song. I thought it was really fun. And I mean, she looked great. Like she looked beautiful, but it's just like when you know somebody's potential and you know what they can do and you expect more, which might be a character flaw of myself because I do know her off the show. But I mean, she was great. I'm excited to see what she brings as well. Morphine, this girl, I have followed her the longest of any of the cast, actually. I found her on Instagram or TikTok a while ago, like a few years now I've been following her because she performs at a club in Miami and I'm obsessed with Juicy Love, who just was on The View with Gypsy Rose. Let's get into that later. But she performs uh, with her at this club in Miami and I literally cannot think of the name of it right now. What is, oh my God, why can't I think of the name of this club? Doesn't matter, whatever. Um, but so I followed her for a while. So when I saw she was in the cast, I was so excited because I love her drag. She does, this makeup that she does is absolutely insane. So I'm really excited to see, you know, that come out on the show. But I will say I wasn't, I wasn't that floored by the performance. I wasn't like taken away, but I'm not, disc again, I'm not discrediting any of these girls because of the fact that it was the premiere. It was the first episode. Like there's so much more to go. And if they gave everything at the beginning, they would, they can't all be Sasha Colby. I'm sorry, but like, they can't just give everything at once and then like keep riding that high. So they have to, you know, they kind of have to like breadcrumb us a little bit and give us a little bit. And then like, you know, they'll be high some week, low some weeks. I get it. It's a drag, it's a it's drag race. Like I'm, it's not anything new. So I, I was a little let down, but I'm excited to see what she has to bring because I know she can bring it. Now, the last girl, it's not that I didn't like her because I think she has potential and seeing her drag now, she has definitely evolved and she has definitely taken it to a level that was not shown on this episode, but a mandatory meeting. What the fuck? Like the, the performance wasn't terrible. I will say it wasn't, it wasn't that the performance was bad. Like her talent show was fine. That runway. What? Like, I don't, I don't, was she looking in the same mirror that I, like, we were all seeing her in? I just, I was very confused. I don't, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean, but I think she needs a mandatory reality check or something. But she seemed so sweet. She seemed really, really nice. And, like, her untucked moment was, she was so cute and untucked and, like, really, I feel like she's going to be, like, I don't think she's a bad drag queen. I just was a little, like, huh? At her runway so we will see where she goes from there i promise you my reviews of the show each week are going to be more in depth as we go but it's the premiere it's the first episode like i don't want to just like rule these girls out to begin with like i know most gays are mean and not that i'm not but like i'm not just gonna be like she sucks so she's done also i don't do drag so like i really i'm speaking on a level that i can't even compare to so that being said so excited that drag race is back and i cannot wait for this season Again, these first seven girls, I really, really liked. Overall, I absolutely loved the episode and I'm so excited to see it where it goes. But before we move on to the next topic, the fact that they got Break My Soul as a lip sync song, do you know how much that must have cost to get a Beyonce, to get a Beyonce song alone? The rights for that has to be money. To get Break My Soul, a song that was the lead single of one of the biggest albums of the year when it was released, like, I I need to know. I need to know how much Rue wrote on that check to get that song clear for the sample. And also, Beyonce has been giving them a lot the last few years. Miss Tina was a guest judge on All Stars. They had two or three Beyonce songs as a lip sync last season. They've had a few. And I, I, I'm blanking now, of course, because I swear to I swear to God, I go into recording and I'm like, oh, my God, I have all of these facts ready. And I'm like, oh, I'll remember it when I'm doing it. Da, da, da. And then I turn the camera on and I'm like, what's my name? I'm like, what am I doing? But it's fine. They've had a they've had a, a decent amount of Beyonce lip sync songs is what I'll say over the last few seasons. The fact that they got Break My Soul, which is so new, that was very interesting to me. The fact that Miss Tina was on it. I'm like, are we going to we're not. But like, could you imagine if Beyonce was ever on Drag Race? I can't. That's too much for me to handle. That's too pop to handle. I can't get into it. And that being said, let's move on to the next TV topic of the week, the Golden Globe. So obviously starting out the red carpet, I mean, the Abbott Elementary cast looked so good. All of them. All of them looked 
phenomenal. I was so, I again, I love the show. I'm so excited for it to come back. It comes back in like two or three weeks. So super stoked for that. But they all looked phenomenal. I want to say Janelle James definitely had my favorite look. Those like, sl those yellow or green sleeves with that black dress. Oh my God, she looked fucking phenomenal. And yeah, they just all looked stunning. Margot Robbie, I mean, obviously she looked out of control. Hunter Schaefer, did you see her? The way the dress had like the little movement to it. She looked gorgeous, absolutely stunning. So excited to see her just like any anytime I see Hunter Schaefer, I'm just excited. So was very excited to see her on the red carpet. Obviously, Dua Lipa looked fantastic. When doesn't she? That's like what's an, as much as I love her, that's what's annoying about Dua Lipa is she always looks good. She could be on vacation, which she always is. She could be on a red carpet. She could be walking down the street in a hoodie and sunglasses. Like she just always looks so good. And I'm like, how? Like, how do you look this good all the time? She looked so stunning on the red carpet. I was ugh, just obsessed. And then we get into the show. It's like the monologue heard around the world, but then like not because I feel like it's already fizzling out. But it was like, it was very controversial. So Joe Coy did the monologue. I'm sure you guys have heard about it by now, seen it. But I was just like, what are you saying? Like, what is happening? So obviously there was the whole Taylor joke. He made the comment saying the only difference between us and the NFL is we're not going to show Taylor Swift as much or something along those lines. They panned to her. She like took a sip of her drink, didn't look too amused, but I don't think she was mad about it. Like, I think she was just like sipping her drink, like up oh, talking about Taylor. Like, of course, like use me for views kind of thing. Um, so that was interesting. I'm, I'm very curious about like her body language when it happened, because I don't think she was like angry about it. I think she just was like, Okay, they're talking about me and like, let me sip my drink while they talk about me. Obviously, she knew the camera was going to go on her as soon as it happened. So maybe she could have laughed. Maybe she could have if she wasn't mad about it. So we'll never know. That's the thing with these award shows. You'll never know what these celebrities were thinking while this moment happened. So it's just kind of like you have to roll with it and just like assume, I guess. But that wasn't even the worst part of it. The worst part had to be the Barbie joke. Like, what were you thinking? He said, the key moment in Barbie is when she goes from perfect beauty to bad breath, cellulite, flat feet, or what casting directors call character actor. Like, what? And then the whole comment about Oppenheim, like, it just like, I just think men need to stop. I think men need to, A, men need to stop hosting award shows. Just enough. Straight men at that. Let's stop giving them hosting gigs. Let's give it, I mean, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler have always knocked it out of the park when they do the Golden Globe. So where can we bring them back? I mean, I know Tina Fey is busy doing like Mean Girls press right now, but like, come on. Can we, there wasn't anybody else available? Honestly, I didn't even know who Joe Coy was before this. I knew he was like somehow linked to Chelsea Handler because I knew like he was on Chelsea lately and they dated briefly. I knew like, I, I knew of him, but I didn't realize he was a comedian. And like, I just am like, Male comedians just really need to like get it together and like run their jokes by some people before they say them because I'm just like, what the fuck are you saying? Like how many times do we have to have an award show where somebody says something offensive before they're like screening it or, you know, telling them, hey, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't say that about a like a woman or their cellulite or this or that. Like I just, I don't know can't change it. It And the, the whole point is to talk about it. And here I am talking about it. So I'm giving them what they wanted. I understand the game. Like, I'm not dumb. I know what they're doing. It's just like, really, there wasn't any like funny gay man or woman to do it. Maybe no host. Why, why don't we just do no host? The VMAs did it for a few times. They had the virtual host member in 2016, I think it was. I was there for that VMA and there was no host on stage. It was just performances and award uh like speeches and acceptance speeches and like it was fine i didn't feel like there was anything missing i was totally fine with it like so either get like somebody good get tina fey and amy poehler i would even take like like quinta brunson why couldn't she host it i mean i know she was nominated but like just like let's like turn the wheels a little bit and like turn the car fully away from straight men and just go down like gay man women trans person anybody other than a straight man I think that's like the route that we should be taking for hosting gigs. But moving on from the Golden Globes monologue, obviously, Timothy Chalamet, Kylie Jenner showing up there was crazy. She didn't walk the carpet. So it was kind of like a surprise, a little gag when she showed up and everyone saw her. She looked gorgeous. When doesn't she? I mean, come on, you can hate her all you want. 
the bitch is stunning. Um, and they had their little cute moment. There was like that camera on them. They were clearly like going back and forth with I love you. So it was cute. Again, this is a couple that I never would have expected, but I'm I'm not like I like I'm not mad about it. I I honestly really like it. I'm 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 here for it. Like I hope this is like a I don't know if it's a forever thing. I don't know if they're going to get married and do the whole thing. If they do, I would not be mad. Like, I'm totally into it. I just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I can't just like call Kylie or Timothy up and ask how it's going, but I hope they're together for a bit. Like, I hope this is something we see for a long time. Is it end game? Who knows? I, I, you, you, you'll never know, but I'm content with it. It's definitely a weird pairing, but seeing them together, I was like, okay, I see it now. Like, I get it. This is cute. They're happy. It's cute. I like it. Now on moving with them, I mean, the real moment of the night was Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift, and Kylie. Kylie? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> when Selena goes over to her and is like, uh, da da da, like mouthing whatever, I asked for a photo and she said no. And then she says, with Timothy. <laughs> That's not even what I'm shocked about. Girls, gossip, do your thing. Like, I don't care. I It's kind of funny if Kylie Jenner told you not to take a photo with her. Can we just talk about the Selena Gomez of it all? I, I, I feel like every week she goes on this, like, big social media breakdown. I'm taking a break. You guys take everything I say the wrong way. Da, da, da. And then by the time you can finish reading her comment of her social media break and refresh your phone, she's back online. She was literally last night said, hey, I'm taking a social media break after like commenting on, I think it was E! News saying like, hey, that's not what I said. I was talking about two of my friends who hooked up. Um, and by the time I woke up this morning, she was back on Instagram. I'm like, girl, do you know what a break means? Like, this isn't an episode of Friends. Like, you you need to understand what a break is. A social media break is longer than six hours. You gotta, you, you, like, you've gotta be serious for once in your life, Selena. It's getting tired. And I think I might be, like, jumping off the ship. I was never really fully on the ship. I was kind of like, I feel like with Selena Gomez, if Selena Gomez was a boat, I was like, the safety boat on the side you know the little like what you jump onto if you need to like escape the boat and like i would hop on and off of that but i was never fully on board she had moments where i love her i love only murders in the building some i like some of her music like i i i don't know she's just one of those celebrities that i never really stuck to like she just didn't do it for me but i don't dislike her but i'm getting to a point where i'm just like can you shut the fuck up please delete the instagram app delete everything delete tiktok delete instagram you are fine like, you will do not need to be posting on social media to be successful. Your cosmetics company does really well. Your shows do well. Your music is your music. Doesn't do, you know, it, it's definitely music. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, I think... I think Selena Gomez needs to throw her phone into an ocean and leave it there for a, a long time. Get a new phone in six months and then come back to social because this constant on and off. I'm taking a break. No, I'm back. I'm taking a break. No, I'm back. Like, my God, my God, it is exhausting. God bless Taylor Swift for dealing with her because I don't know how she does it. I really do not. <laughs> and that is Golden Globes. I'm going to be honest. I didn't watch all of the show. I watched like here and there and then I caught clips. So congrats to all the winners. The Golden Globes is a weird award show. And I think it's fine to say, I'm pretty sure they canceled it for a few years. Like, I don't think it happened for two or three years. And I was back. It's just like, it's exciting. Everyone always looks good. Like, it's a fun night. But it's just like, to me, if it's not like you got, if it's not, you know, one of the four, I'm like, it's exciting. It's fun. But it's like, that's a lie because the VMAs is like gay Christmas to me. The VMAs is one of my favorite nights on TV. And I love like going to the VMAs. It's always so much fun. So, not that, you know, EGOT is the big four, of course, but like right into that to VMAs. And then I would say like three levels down to me is Golden Globes. I don't get that excited. It, it is what it is. But, you know, it's a pop culture podcast. I can't not talk about it. Duh. Hello. <laughs> um, something I am very excited about and something that I um, am bursting at the scene to talk about is the Mean Girls premiere. Monday night. They had the Mean Girls premiere here in New York, and I mean the Lindsay Lohan of it all. 
she showed up. So, okay. So I saw that she was in New York, I think like Saturday or Sunday, someone posted a picture of her. She was at JFK with her family. And I was like, oh, why is she in New York? That's weird. Like, She's probably just visiting family. I don't know why it didn't click to me that she was here for the Mean Girls premiere. Like, hello. She's literally Katie Harron. Like, why wouldn't she be there? But she showed up. She was there. I mean, I'm sorry. Lindsay Lohan showed up to this premiere to a movie that is a remake of her like smash hit beloved movie from 20 years ago showed up to this premiere walked the pink carpet and devoured everybody else on that carpet she looked so phenomenal so stunning and to see her back with tina fey like to see her just like with the new cast everything like my god i just love that woman so much the uh, she like we all know she obviously like she was like on top of the world at one point when she was younger. She was starring in every movie. She was like everywhere on every tabloid. She went through her rough patch. You know, she definitely, she struggled a bit. She had her moments. And the fact that she, it, like, she came back, she's doing her thing. She comes into the spotlight when she wants. She releases movies here and there. Like, she's just, she's the it girl of all it girls. I just, I love Lindsay Lohan so much. I just, I want nothing but good things for her. She is the mother of all mothers, the it girl of all it girls. Live, laugh, love, Lindsay Lohan. That's, that's the title of the episode right there. Boom, boom. Live, laugh, love, Lindsay Lohan. I just, I, I, I have no other words to say besides the fact that like her showing up to the premiere was such a like big moment for me, for, for us. It was everything. I was so excited. And then I was like, oh my God. Lindsay is there. If I get a photo of Lindsay Lohan and Renee Rapp, like, girl, we didn't get one. We got a photo. It was like a group photo and they were both in it. So I'll take it. That's enough for me. That's fine. Um, Megan the Stallion was there. I mean, you guys know how I feel about Megan. She looked absolutely stunning. And I think the biggest takeaway is that interview that she did. And she was like, Renee is my friend. The second I met her, I was like, oh, you're my friend. We're cool. Like she, the, their friendship is so pure and genuine. And I just, I love that they're able to just like, it wasn't just like a song for a movie. They've like created this friendship and Renee talked about her and said like, oh, if anyone talks bad about Megan, like they're going to have to come through me. Like they just, you can tell they really are just like a fun little duo. And I'm like, I hope there's more of Megan and Renee to come. I hope this isn't the last, like, I hope not my fault was like a one and done thing. Like do some more, do something else like let's get another song maybe a remix maybe like something I don't know but ugh, I just I love this blossoming friendship and I can't wait to see where it goes obviously Renee was there I mean she looked gorgeous I I'm so excited to see how she portrays Regina in the movie after I mean Regina was her breakout role on Broadway it was her Broadway debut and now she gets to play the role in the movie version like that's cool that's really really cool and i'm just really excited to see I, I think despite being a renee fan like obviously you guys know i love the bitch but like i think just the fact that like you had your debut role in such a huge musical adaptation and now you get to play that role in the movie like that's cool you know what i mean i mean so I, i'm very excited to see how this plays out and i just i can't wait to see it i can't wait and the final thing, just to kind of chit chat through, obviously my girl Gypsy Rose, she was on The View, her Lifetime uh, series is premiering. I have not watched it yet. I will watch it probably this weekend and I'll give everybody a little my rundown next week. Her book came out, like she is just on top of the world and this influencer era she is in, keep it going girl keep this ball rolling, her get ready with me, her outfit of the day, all of the press she's doing. I just love it. I am so... I'm just so happy to be alive at the same time that Gypsy Rose is free from jail. And it's just so exciting to see that she is like, not just like going into hiding. I was, I honestly, I knew she wouldn't, but like at one point when she was in jail a few years ago, I was like, she could just come out and like want to live a normal life and not be in the spotlight. And boy, she does not want that. She is eating the spotlight up and good for her. Good for her. Soak it up, live this life, do your thing. Like what, the girl has had the craziest life get your bag get some coin do your thing gypsy rose we love you and that's the end of the show <laughs> that you know ending it on a high note gypsy rose and Lindsay lohan what more could you ask for that is literally the most andrew nukatola statement you could probably say and now you know how it goes it is time for our yes and our mess of the week and our yes this is something that i am very late to i am late to hopping on the bandwagon and i'll admit it i was 
I wasn't, not that I wasn't interested in it. I just never watched it. I never hopped on. But The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Every, I mean, if you don't know, now you know. The finale of season four just aired. And it is like breaking the internet. It is everywhere. And I, again, I'd never watched it. But the way that this per, this finale has blown up all over the internet, I couldn't help but start it. And I am already almost done with season two. <laughs> we are so obsessed with this show. It is some of the best reality TV I have ever seen in my life. It is so good. We started from the beginning. We're watching it all the way through. We are on season two. We just saw the mid-season finale. So they just, if anybody watches, they just went to Jenny's um, faux lunch where they have like in the garden, the peace garden, and then like cause a war in the garden. Madness. But I'm obsessed. I can't believe I waited this long to watch it. I can't wait to finish it and get to the end of season four so I can see all of this drama roll out because like, this is crazy. I'm not going to talk about it right now. What? like what the finale is because I want to give like a live reaction when I get there. I won't talk about the show probably every week unless there's something really big because again, it's old. I'm watching it two or three years late, but it, oh my God. Oh my God. First of all, Meredith Marks, mother, queen. I fucking love Meredith Marks. Everything she says, she is, she just like, the way she handles herself and handles situations is so so calm cool collected but like she doesn't let a bitch walk all over her like she knows what she wants she knows how to like remove herself from a situation without being a bitch about it like she oh i fucking love her lisa barlow obsessed like she has her moment sometimes there's you know she gets a little wishy-washy with the girls here and there but she is like if the, if you were to look up like a house of real housewife in the dictionary i feel like it would be lisa barlow she just she's so good she's i'm obsessed all of them honestly except honestly jen yeah i i would say like jen is the only one i'm not like loving mary annoys me a little bit mary i'm like eh, like she just a lot she and she goes back on her word i mean they all go back on their words so that's not really a valid argument something about mary i don't know this cult thing i feel like i'm I, i'm believing it i feel like she is leading a cult or something something's a little weird with her um and i am excited to see the jen shaw arrest roll out as we keep going right she's been arrested at this point but she's out so she hasn't like gone for trial or anything so she's still on the show again and we're halfway through season two and uh i am anyone who hasn't watched it i'm begging you start watching this show because it is phenomenal tv it is so good i if you like reality tv you're gonna like it it is chef's kiss i'm obsessed i'm obsessed and i'm late i understand i'm late to the bandwagon so if everyone listening is like yeah where have you been for the last four years i get it sue me it's fine but i'm so happy to be on this reality tv journey now <laughs> Switching gears over to our mess, we actually, for the first time in Two Pop to Handle history, we have a two for one special. So I could not pick between these two. And they're two people, they do relate back to the stories, but I was just like, no, I think this is it. I think these people have to be both the messes. Um, first up, Golden Globe related, Mark Ronson. I don't really think about Mark Ronson often. I mean, he produced a lot of Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa music. So obviously they're like obsessed. Love that. But, and now he's saying it was a joke, but he posed, he didn't win the Golden Globe. He lost to Billie Eilish. The song, both of their songs were in the same movie. So like at the end of the day, like the movie that you helped promote and like put music into still won yeah you didn't win but something related to your project did so I feel like you should still like pat yourself on the back but he posted a picture of his acceptance speech like ripped up in the trash and it just kind of gave me like loser energy he's now come out and says it was a joke but I'm just like I just feel like you don't do that especially when the winner is somebody who was a part of the movie that you were nominated for and especially when that movie is the barbie movie when everybody is like friends and it was the biggest deal of the summer biggest movie of the year like why are you i don't know it just felt weird to me and i don't really have much else to say than like just don't like sore losers are so ugh, to me you know like yeah, you didn't win. Okay, I get it. It sucks. It does kind of sting double because he was nominated twice in the category. It's like, I get it. I understand. But like, don't post your acceptance speech ripped up. Come on. And you lost to Billie Eilish. Like, it's not like you lost to some rando person who like doesn't, isn't like on top of the music world. It's Billie Eilish. She has like seven Grammy nominations without an album out. What? Like, come on. You lost to somebody who like definitely deserved it. 
get over yourself. You're a grown man. And my second mess of the week is Rachel McAdams. Now, she didn't do anything, and that's what's bothering me. She has consistently stayed out of any Mean Girls reboot, reunion, anything like that. She said if there was a movie, she would do it, but she didn't want to do the commercial. She didn't go to the premiere. Like, she just... Something about her and the Mean Girls cast just, like, rubs me the wrong way because Lindsay, like, all of them are friends. Like, they all have, like, been in projects together. I mean, the Mean Girls commercial is the project, but, like, they all have said, like, they keep in touch, they talk. Like, maybe they haven't been friends since the movie premiered, but, like, they've rekindled something. And I don't know if there's bad blood or anything, but, like, the fact that, like, Rach, I don't know, I'm sure she was invited. She's Regina George. I can't imagine Rachel McAdams wasn't invited to the premiere of this movie. Like, or at least, like, post about it, make an effort. I don't know. Something about Rachel McAdams is, is rubbing me the wrong way lately. Like, you're not Regina George in real life. You don't need to be a bitch. You don't need to be a mean girl. Go to the Mean Girls premiere. Promote the movie. Like, it is a legacy. You know, it's like, I, and that's why Lindsay Lohan is like, be a girl. Like, girl, just like, it's 2024. Grow up. Grow up. And that is the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you. This is a long one. Thank you guys so much for listening as always. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. If you're listening to us as a podcast, we are available wherever podcasts are available. So that is Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. I, you, there's a whole list. There's a lot. If you're listening as a podcast, make sure you give us a rating, give us a five star, tell me what you're thinking, hit that subscribe button, make sure you're getting notified every time that we upload an episode. Make sure you're following us on socials. We are at Two Pop to Handle on all socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. If there's a social media platform, Two Pop to Handle is on it. And with that, thank you guys so much for listening and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.